Commercial buildings are full of actuators, handy devices used in a building automation system to help control the temperature and ventilation in a building. In modern buildings, actuators are connected together on a digital network. Digital networks communicate in terms of ones and zeros, varying voltages, and programmed currents. Actuators take this digital data and convert it into physical action, opening and closing a damper, changing the flow of air, or turning a valve to change the flow of hot and cold water. In these modern systems, actuators are powered by electricity, as opposed to being air-powered in older pneumatic systems. And as we all know, from time to time, the power goes out. So fail-safes need to be built in to prevent a disaster in the case of power loss. For instance, if an outside air damper remains stuck in the open position on a very cold day, a burst pipe could mean big trouble and extensive damage. Fail-safe actuators, on the other hand, would return the damper to a closed position, reducing the risk of damage. Such actuators are often used on crucial valve and damper applications that require such protection, saving rooms from overheating and air coils from freezing. There have been many ways fail-safes have been built into actuators. In the pneumatics world, fail-safes were essentially inherent. Air pressure pushed on a diaphragm that compresses a spring and drives the actuator's pushrod. When air pressure fails, the spring automatically returns the diaphragm and pushrod to the normal home position. Electric actuators are quite different by nature and have no inherent failsafe, so one must be built in. A common solution to this problem borrowed an idea from pneumatics by introducing spring technology into the actuator to drive the return in case of power loss. As electricity drives the actuator to open or close a valve or damper, it simultaneously tensions the mechanical springs. There are a few downsides to this technique. First, once installed, the actuator's fail direction cannot be altered without flipping over the actuator, changing the shaft clamping mechanism, or potentially replacing the entire actuator. Second, in order to maintain the damper or valve position, electricity must be continually delivered to hold the tension of the springs using excess electricity. Third, when designing and manufacturing these actuators, the torque has to be essentially doubled to overcome the resistance of the spring in addition to the load requirements. This makes the actuators larger, heavier, and more expensive. Fourth, spring-driven fail-safes typically drive quickly, and with excessive torque during fail-safe mode, equipment may be damaged. Another technique to build fail-safes into electric actuators is to use supercapacitors. Capacitors are electronic devices that store electric charge and require very little current to remain continuously charged whenever power is applied. When electric power fails, the charge of the capacitor is used to drive the actuator back to its home position. This capacitor-driven failsafe brings a number of advantages over spring-driven technology. First, capacitors take far less space in the actuator housing, allowing for smaller, lighter actuators. This also allows the actuator to be attached to much shorter shafts than bulkier spring returns. Second, capacitor-driven actuators provide switch-selectable fail-safe directions, meaning one model of actuator can easily be used for clockwise and counterclockwise applications with hardly any effort. Also, the fail-safe can be turned off for testing and the shaft manually adjusted easily. Spring-driven fail-safes need to be wrenched back for testing if manual positioning is available at all. Third, while capacitor-driven actuators require a higher peak initialization current, they provide overall higher energy efficiency since electricity is not required to maintain a spring tension. Fourth, while in fail-safe mode, a consistent torque is maintained just as in powered mode, protecting equipment from potential damage. Lastly, because there is no need to overcome spring tension, capacitor-driven actuators can be designed to deliver only the torque required by the application, lessening the form factor and driving the overall value of the actuator. As you can see, there are incredible advantages to electric actuators with capacitor-driven fail-safes. However, many jobs are still spec'd requiring old-school, spring-driven fail-safes. This is partly because, for some, that's what they've always done. But we recommend capacitor-driven fail-safes for all the reasons stated in this video. They're more reliable, consistent, energy-efficient, durable, and have a longer life expectancy in nearly every application. To learn more about fail-safe actuators and other building automation solutions from KMC, please check out our other videos and visit us on the web at kmccontrols.com.